Good evening, dear friends. Today we will dedicate our weekly meeting. Not to the whole leg, but just to the knee. But before that, I would like to ask you, where are you? Who are you with? How are you? What are you? How is your mood, health, blood pressure, mood, bon appetit to everyone who is eating, by the way? Write in the comments, how is the weather? How in general? What? Where are you there? What are you doing? How in general? Keep us in the loop. In general, we need to know such things. So look, the knee joint, it is represented by the femur, the tibia, and the fibula. There is also a patella here. Inside, there is also an interesting formation called menisci, also ligaments, many ligaments, which are very often damaged. We can even divide it like this. These are the joint surfaces, you see? Here. And here between the tibia and fibula, we also have two such speech formations. They are called menisci. Problems most often arise with the knee joint. We won't discuss arthritis now, an inflammatory disease. We are interested in osteoarthritis and knee pain, not related to osteoarthritis itself, but related to muscle damage, tendons, partially ligaments around the knee joint itself. The most common, let's discuss two disorders now that occur in the knee joint, two types of pain. This pain right here in front, right here on the knee itself, right here in front, in the area of the kneecap, a little lower, a little higher it can be. And the second, this is the pain right here inside, on the inner part of the knee joint. Most often they occur during movements. They can be during a step, during squatting, when you sit on a chair, stand up. During movement in general, under load, on the stairs, when you go up, go down the stairs. First, we need to conduct a diagnosis, the movement of the knee joint itself, because very often the movement itself damages it. Because the knee starts moving at the wrong angle, the design is intended for a certain movement in the knee joint. It became dirty. I will show it on this, so that your knee does not go beyond the foot during movement. If your knee joint starts to shift excessively inward or outward during movement, well, outward is not as dangerous as excessive movement inward, because this starts to damage, first of all, not the ligaments, of course, but the attachment points of the adductor muscles, which often become inflamed as a result. They are located right here on the inner part. This is our left leg. Here it is, the left leg. And right here on the inner part, next to the knee joint, we have a group of adductor muscles, which are often tense, shortened, and very often there is swelling even right here, formed due to the constant overload of these muscles. It occurs, for example, in such a case the most common when there is an injury overload of the knee joint. This happens when climbing stairs or descending. When we put our foot down, the knee starts to go inward in relation to the foot, and we rise. Or when the foot is at an angle and the knee moves forward like this. This is also a dangerous position for the knee joint in which muscle injuries, tendon injuries can occur, and the meniscus can also be injured, damaged. There can even be a partial tear. What are the dangers of walking, including when your feet are turned out? Also, in this case, your knee, it moves forward while your foot is turned outward. If you walk in this way, there is a high risk of damaging your knee joint, of injuring your knee joint. Therefore, this should be avoided. How can this be avoided? We will talk about this now as well. And the second, most common violation is tension. Inflammation of the ligaments of the kneecap, the tendon of the quadriceps femoris. Here it goes. When our quadriceps femoris shortens, the quadriceps muscle, this causes tension in the ligaments of the kneecap, tension in the tendon of the quadriceps muscle, and the kneecap begins to scratch the femur it is too close to it. The ligamentous apparatus can become inflamed, which is also not good. This occurs when the quadriceps muscle shortens. When it shortens along with it, the iliolumbar muscle usually shortens as well during the fused process between the fasciae, between the rectus femoris and the vastus lateralis. So friends, you can't wait to get rid of these disorders. How can we strengthen our knee joint First, 
We need to unlearn this incorrect movement. Why do some people choose this foot position? Why does their foot turn out like this? Why do they find it comfortable to walk this way? Who makes them do this? It's because when they step, their body starts to sway from side to side like this. And in order to maintain balance more easily, they have to turn their foot out like this. That is, their foot points in the direction of their shoulder movement. In order to get rid of this movement, that is, it simply won't work just like that. If a person finds it comfortable to walk like this, decides that now I will walk and put my foot straight, it will be very difficult for him to maintain balance. He will feel that the load on the outer part of his foot is constantly increasing and his knee will excessively turn outwards. Therefore, he needs to change this tilt into a turn. At the moment when his foot steps forward, his opposite shoulder should also move forward. Then instead of this tilt, he will have a body turn, and it will be comfortable for him to hold the weight on his foot. He will not lose balance. Because this movement occurs precisely at the moment of losing balance, essentially the foot's position needs to be adjusted first. Also, attention should be paid precisely at the moment of climbing the stairs. To start with, and then at the moment of descent, how your foot is positioned. Essentially, the foot must be positioned forward, facing you, not sideways. Because if you put your knee to the side, it will still be facing forward. Here, your risk of injury increases a thousandfold, a hundredfold, tenfold, possibly even. That is, the direction of the knee should coincide with the direction of the foot. To get used to this, a special exercise was devised by the Yadrinsky Scientific Research Institute of the Knee Joint. It is done using a wall, legs, knees, feet. Here's a wall in front of me. This is how I stand. I put my foot close to the wall as if you were on the other side of the wall. I'm holding onto it with my hands. I start moving my knee. So the foot you see is right up against the wall. I move my knee and my task is to reach the wall with my knee. And I position my foot so that the big toe and the heel are on the line. And along the same line you see, I move my knee joint to the wall. That's how I move it. I need to learn so that my knee, the movement of the knee joint coincides with the movement. In short, you got it, right? First movement begins. Second, I move my knee towards the little toe. And here too, my task is to reach the wall. Not everyone will be able to do this movement right away. Perhaps the knee won't reach right away. You must hold on with your hands. So make the amplitude such that it's comfortable for you. And thirdly, this knee moves between our thumb and pinky in the middle. If pain occurs during these movements, stop and reduce the amplitude. That is, you need your knee joint to get used to moving within the limits of your foot and not protruding inward and outward. It's only possible this way. So, friends, we did this. This is what we did. And now, what now? We need to relieve tension from the inner thigh muscles. Tension in the front thigh muscles. And as a bonus, you get to strengthen the rear calf muscle. This one which plays a significant role in stabilizing the knee joint because it holds the fibula. Without it, the joint becomes unstable. So first, we eliminate trigger points in the rectus femoris, the quadriceps femoris, the inner thigh. For this, we use balls, rollers. We lie down, roll out the entire inner thigh. We also use the ball for lying down. You can do so near the wall. In any position, you can work on your thigh. The inner surface of the thigh as well. You lie down, as if I lay down. Imagine, and you work on your inner thigh surface here. All these adductor muscles, well, okay, I'll show you. Since everyone is here, then I need to show it. How to do this. Look. To work through the front surface of the thigh, for instance, hold the roller like this. You put it down. You lie down. You put it right here. 
You turn on the TV. You watch and work it out. You can make movements. See? Different positions. Forward, backward. You can do it to the right, to the left. The main thing is for you to find the painful point, the area of tension, and work it out. Divide your thigh into several parts. The middle, the outer part, the inner. Work through each of these parts. Don't leave any painful points there. Be ruthless to trigger points. The same goes for the inner surface of the thigh. You also lie down here. You put your foot here and work like this. This is especially useful for those who have inner knee pain. You need to massage not the place that hurts, but above it, on the inner surface of the thigh. Here you need to work through all the painful areas that you have. You do this with rollers. That's how you can do it. Also work on putting it between his legs. You can move your foot at this moment. You can do this in different positions here. Balls can be used too but it's better to begin with a roller. This will already bring relief. The tension will decrease after this. We've completed everything. Now muscle strengthening. Which muscles should be strengthened first for knee joint stabilization? It's the quadriceps muscle. You need to work it out, massage it, and strengthen it. The exercise to strengthen it primarily involves everything related to straightening the leg. Try doing this without any load at first. Then you can do it with a load. Secure the rubber band and start pulling upwards. Right here, your quadriceps muscle is working. Here it is tensing up. This is how you strengthen it. It's very important for stabilizing the knee joint for the mobility of the kneecap. Three sets of 10 to start with. Then you can increase the number of sets. Three to four sets are enough, and the second muscle that needs to be trained when having knee joint problems. It's the gastrocnemius muscle. Sit down on a stool. Here your rubber band is fixed. In the same way it was hooked onto the foot. The rubber band was stretched, and the foot movement goes like this inward. The rubber band is fixed for you, and the foot will be moving inward. In this way, it works inside for you. Between the tibia and fibula bones, the posterior tibial muscle. So, friends, these exercises will help your knees and you to recover. We do, we practice, we write comments. We leave comments, we give likes. Try it, who what, who what, how there. Write it down, okay?